Hi Damon. Hi. <laughs> Damon, today I'm here just to ask you a question that so many figure girls are going to be really interested to hear your response. Yes. Currently, you're, you're boss man, you're my coach, um, and you're prepping me for um, a figure comp in June the 7th. Yep. And we decided right at the outset that uh, we weren't going to do any cardio. You're not a fan of cardio to get to stage. And I think that the FIO readers and all the BC clients and everyone else that wants to come across this video and watch it are going to be really interested to hear why the no cardio, why is that not a part of your plan? Because let's face it, it's in probably 95% of coaches' plans. And there's a good reason right there. Okay. Um, uh, look, I... Uh, I despise cardio as a method for creating a superior athlete, which is what we are trying to do in getting a person on stage. Uh, have done for many, 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 many years. I have never said you don't need to do cardio. I say you need not to do cardio. Cardio at best is an absolute waste of time. At worst, it will ruin your physique. Now, uh, how can I say this when everybody else says the opposite? It's really difficult to answer the question because this is like I'm the first person saying the world's round and everyone's going, it's flat, it's flat, it's flat. And trying to explain the world not being flat and why it's not flat is really difficult to do. It just isn't. Now. I, I, I was talking to Ingrid before we made this video about I don't even know where to start my commentary on uh, where not to do cardio. Really the issue or, or uh, the, the bigger issue is what should you be doing? Let's throw cardio everything else out the window for a second and go what are we trying to do? And the reason Ingrid is, is, is using my help and uh, comes to me and keeps coming back is because everything that we do is measured and it's logical. Now, here we have a graph, I'm not sure if the camera can get this, of just a, an example client for uh, sort of getting ready in competition condition. It shows her at 63.9 kilos at 17.8% body fat, which, which might be a, a standard slightly too soft but pretty normal starting point for a lot of girls getting ready for a figure comp and in this case we've set a goal of 60 kilos at 11% on stage which is competition condition for for figure it's not cross-strated glutes but it's it's definitely definitely in extremely good condition full abs thigh separation should be coming out of your fats distributed that way etc 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 now when we look at the numbers here the diet is the tool that we use to get the person from 63.9 kilos down to 60 kilos. It's 3.9 kilos that she needs to lose over the entire competition prep. That's not a lot of weight. 3.9 kilos. She's going to be 11% body fat because we need to train on 900 grams of muscle in that time. In order to be 11% body fat at 60 kilos, she needs 53.4 kilos of lean mass. She's currently got 52.5 kilos of lean mass. So we've quantified the goal. Now in terms of answering why no cardio, I would say, well, do you really need to do cardio to go from 63.9 to 60 kilos in 16 to 20 weeks? Do you need to run for two hours a day, four hours a day, doing all of this craziness to lose four kilos in that time? No, that's absurd. Will cardio help you put on 900 grams of muscle? No, it'll absolutely stop you from putting on 900 grams of muscle. If she doesn't put on the 900 grams of muscle, we can address that goal simply by increasing her body fat percentage. So if she, say, does this cardio, loses three kilos of muscle, for instance, at the same 60 kilos, the difference between being 11% uh, would be that she would actually be 
18% fat. So if we do cardio and diet and we lose the same amount of weight because she didn't put on muscle but she lost muscle, she is now fatter than she was. This doesn't need a degree in biochemistry to understand. This is basic mathematics. But no one doing contest preparation is measuring body composition. And if you don't measure what you're trying to achieve, how in hell are you supposed to expect to achieve it? You don't even know what you're trying to do. And this is what I see with all of the people arguing for cardio, is they go, we're going to smash you, we're going to starve you, we're going to just run you into the ground, and we're just going to keep on running you and starving you and smashing you and smashing you, until what? You're lean. Does that mean you created a better athlete? No, it means you just tried to kill the body you didn't want, with absolutely no design of the body that you did want. So, why don't we do cardio? Because we actually design the body that you do want and then do the work that's relevant to achieving it. Cardio has absolutely no positive contribution to doing that and actually an entirely negative contribution. So I'm not saying, hey, I've got a method whereby you don't need to do cardio. I'm saying cardio is really freaking stupid. Do not do it. <laughs> okay. Now, interestingly <laughs> enough, we are sitting here with one of your other clients. Now, Albeit Girls, he is a male, <laughs> but um, it was really interesting just chatting to him. And I'm going to I'm going to move over and um, uh, introduce you to Benson. And I'm going to get Benson to to mention something that he uh, mentioned to me before. So. Hello, Benson. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Benson, thanks for um, doing this little video. But I want you just to repeat what you said to me about your feelings coming to Recomp and how you felt about not doing cardio originally. What were your thoughts on that? Um, I've been with Recomp for over two years now. Um, and I've done about eight bodybuilding shows and each one of them I've, I've done the cardio and, and everything that everyone else does. Um, so what I was, I guess, not skeptical, but it was something different. Um, and all I can go off is, since training like this for two years, I've probably had the most compliments and the most progress with any of my training in 10 years I've been training. Um, I feel like I'm a better athlete now for what I do as a bodybuilder. Um, I've put on more muscle. Um, I measured in the other day, um, at five weeks out, leaner than I was the day after my show. So that's all I can go by as results. And I know that works because we measure it weekly. Um, and it's all there on paper, so all the numbers are there, and that's what I go by. So, so how many weeks out are you now? Um, two weeks out from the qualifier, and four from the Arnold's. Right. Okay. And are you happy just to perhaps show the girls? Come on, get your shirt off, Benson. <laughs> the girls will really like to see some eye candy today. <laughs> So that's two weeks out from the qualifier, and as we can see, hell, bloody hell, <laughs> striations everywhere, just standing there. So Damon, what would you just say to wrap up? Okay, the girls are going to say, oh, but you know, men have better metabolisms, more lean muscle mass, they don't need to do the cardio. The math is the same. Math is math, yeah. numbers are numbers. We're doing with Ingrid exactly the same thing that we did for Benson. We have target millimeters, target sum of nine skin fold millimeter measurements to achieve every single week all the way through the prep into the comp. We've got cut off dates at which we need to hit these particular milestones. We do the body composition test every single week. We are training for muscle gain. We don't expect to be putting on piles of muscle during contest prep, but we still do and we still have. Benson's muscle mass, uh, if I've got it here on the system, since we started his contest prep, where are we? His lean mass has increased from a hundred and where was it? Sorry, he's getting depleted now. His lean mass went up from uh, under 100 kilos, it was 97.3 kilos at the start of prep. It's been up as high as 103.5 kilos, so he's put on 6 kilos of lean mass in the starting lead up of his prep. And now as we're starting to deplete, the lean mass appears to be coming down to 101.7 kilos, uh, but that's just because of water and fluid. Our other metric for measuring that is his strength performance in the gym. And as of yesterday, Benson is still hitting personal best performances in the gym. 
Now, if I want a person to stand on stage with muscles, then it makes sense that they should be standing on stage potentially as strong as they have ever been. If you are losing all of your strength every week all the way into your show, you're probably going to be losing muscle. Every kilo of muscle that you lose is another kilo of body weight that wasn't fat. And this is where cardio comes into it. When you do two hours on the treadmill or whatever else it is that you do, you can't come in and back that up with a good set of squats or a good set of deadlifts or a good set of leg presses in terms of strength performance. So most of these coaches aren't even training that way anyway. Lightweights, high rep, ridiculously lightweights. I've seen girls training with broomsticks for 20 sets of 20 and stuff like this. How the hell are you going to look lean and muscular training with broomsticks? It's insane. <laughs> And why on earth would any elite level strength athlete think that the way to look like a superior strength athlete is to go for a walk? I mean, go to the local park in the morning and look at all the fat heifers walking around the park. It doesn't even work, work for fat people. Even fat people can't lose fat doing cardio. The fat people go to the gym, they start doing weights, they finally start losing fat. Do the math, people! It doesn't work. It's really stupid. Cardio is what cardiologists tell their patients with heart disease to do to not die. These are sedentary, obese people. When they say go for a walk for half an hour three times per week, they mean that's all you need to live, not to have abs on stage. Nobody ever designed this concept. When you read about high intensity interval training, which is the latest craze, the people who are who are promoting that go and acknowledge all of the science, all of the research showing that steady state cardio is an entirely negative thing. It does not work for creating a superior athlete, lower body fat in a strength athlete or anything else. But then they kind of go, but because we need to do cardio, because this is just basically an obsessive religion, they then go, let's do this kind of cardio. We'll go for uh, interval sprints and things. I will agree that interval sprints are superior to going for a run, which is superior to going for a walk. Reason being it requires a superior athlete, but there's an activity that goes beyond the interval sprint based on the same thing. It's called heavy bloody squats. <laughs> Do a few sets of them and that just absolutely kicks butt on those interval sprints. Train like a strength athlete to look like a strength athlete. Don't train to be the worst endurance athlete you could possibly be, which is what, what cardio actually is. Thanks, Damon. Sorry I get riled up. Just, <laughs> mm, Loved it. infuriates me. Loved it. Terrific. Thanks okay, a lot. Thanks. <laughs>